So our teapots have been sitting under plastic for a couple days to dry and they are ready to trim. I usually check my lid fit, flip my pot over, and I check the hardness. So if you can put a fingernail into this and it cleanly comes out without grabbing, um, it's going to be ready to trim. So these look about perfect. Okay, first things first, we got to get this thing right in the middle. So we're going to recenter it. Okay, we've got it centered. Now let's hold it down, put some balls of clay around it, and trim this guy. I've got my pot held down, we're ready to trim. I'm going to come in and make myself a couple of guidelines for the outside of my foot and where the inside of my foot's going to be. That way I know everything out here is going to be junk and everything in here is going to be junk. So the only place I'm not going to trim is between those lines and that will be where my foot's going to be. Okay, let's remove everything out here. And now we can remove everything inside of here to this inside line. All right, so now we know since we haven't trimmed here and we've trimmed a little bit here and a little bit here, basically our foot's done. Um, but we're not gonna leave it this way. We're actually gonna make a raised foot ring. So in order to make that happen, what we're gonna do is come out here and we're gonna trim in a groove. See that? So all I've done is cut in a groove and then I'm gonna blend from that groove down into the body. So I'm gonna go from that groove down into the body. And what that gives me is this raised foot ring. So now that we've cut in our groove and we've blended in our body, I will usually come in and remove just a little bit of weight. But if we threw these nice and even when we were throwing our cylinders, there shouldn't be much here to remove. Um, I'll come back in, and I don't need a foot this quite this wide, so I'm going to remove a little bit more here on the inside. I always make those two guidelines when I first make them kind of wide. In case I want to bring the foot in or the foot out, I can. So I like to come in and cut a little bit of a corner off, kind of a 45 off the corner of my foot. I'll skim the bottom here, but I don't want to trim much because I want this to be the highest point. I don't want to trim too much here and end up with the center being high and it's spinning around like a lazy Susan. I'm going to come out and re-cut my groove here on the outside just to make that foot a little bit more uh, raised so I have a place for my glaze to stop. And after I cut that groove, I want to blend back into the body. So my pot shape is still really smooth and I have a place for my glaze to stop right at the foot ring. And that's it. That's all the trimming I'm going to do. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and take my chatter tool and I'm going to put a pattern in the bottom. I'm going to push down, go from the center to the outside. And that's going to give me my chattered pattern. Okay, before I flip this over, I like to sign my work so that I don't forget to sign it. So I'm going to go ahead and take all these lugs off, flip it over, and we're going to fit the lid to this pot. Okay, as you can see, I flipped the pot over. I re-centered it and put some lugs to hold it in place. And we're going to check the fit of our lid. And it fits pretty tight, so we're not going to have to shave this lid down at all. Um, since we measured carefully, this lid fits perfectly. All we're going to have to do is flip this lid over and uh, do a little bit of cleanup on the bottom where we cut it off the hump. So to clean off these lids, um, we'll just take us a trim tool, any trim tool, and we just skim across the bottom here and remove any kind of trash. Um, or if you cut your lid off and there's still a lot of clay here, a lot of thickness, you may have to trim a bunch here. Um, but we, trimmed, we cut this one off of the hump pretty thin, so we don't have to really remove a lot of clay. We're mostly cleaning this up. And the last thing I like to do in these is I like to trim right underneath that knob a little indent, a kind of a dimple. Just right, right underneath that knob. I feel like it helps keep my knobs from cracking. Um, it is really difficult to compress these types of lids when you're throwing them off the hump since you're pushing into that fat pad of clay there. Okay, our lid's trimmed. 
The last thing to do, set it in there, give it a wiggle, make sure it fits nice. And it does, so that lid is done. Our lid is fit, our pot is trimmed. I will set this lid aside so I don't dump it out in the floor. Um, we're gonna dome in the side of this pot. So I just take the handle of a trim tool and dome that in. So the way I go about doing this is I usually do a straight line, uh, straight down. So I'll poke one hole high. I'll do another one underneath that, going straight down. And it looks like with this one, we're going to end up with three holes. So I'll poke those three, and then I'll come over on either side and poke a hole in between. In between those other holes. And that'll give me a nice uniform pattern. See that? And all these little pieces will just fall right out. Okay, let me show you what the inside looks like. If you can see in there, the inside of this is domed in, so tea bags can't sit flat against them holes and block them all. Um, that's why we dome that in. We are now ready to put on our spout. Um, it is important that we leave these soft, so we wrap them up really well so that they're still formable, so we can fit them to the body of this pot. We want it to match up really nicely. So to cut this spout, I'll line up my pour spigot and make a mark, and then make a mark opposite of it so I'll have a straight line. And then what I'll do is on the top side, the non-pour edge, I'll come up about halfway up the height of the thing and make a line. So now what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to connect uh, this line here all the way to this line here. So right, right, where the, right where it starts, we're going to go all the way around to this line we made up here about halfway up the length of the spigot. So I've drawn those lines. Um, I've drawn them all the way around just as guidelines. I'm going to go ahead and cut on the marks. And this is just rough. Sometimes you'll have to go in and trim these a little better. Um, if you have a circle template, you can set it on top and rotate it and uh, draw a circle all the way around. And that'll also be a good way to mark these. Um, I'm usually not too particular. That's why I like these to be so soft. Here we have our spigot cut off. I've pinched a little bit oval it. Um, I do that because these real wide, short teapots usually require an oval um, to fit. Fit up nice. I just know that from doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and match this up to the pot. And we're going to look at it from the side. The end of our spout cannot be any lower than our lid level because that's going to be our water fill level. If this is lower, it will leak when you fill it up. So this end of your spout has to be minimum um, the height of your intended fill level on your pot. We now have our spout located. This is the height of our intended fill level. I have it centered over the domed in section. Um, I'm ready to mark this. This is where I'm going to attach it. So I'll take in a tool. I'm going to score all the way around so I know where this is going to attach. So I've set the spout aside. We have our area marked where we're going to score and slip. This is going to be our last chance to get in here and clean up these holes from the inside. So there's nowhere for tea or um, whatever you put in this teapot to gather and uh, mold. So I'm going to come in and score and slip. So I'm going to score this really pretty well. The better job you do chewing up and scoring this, um, the better your spout is going to stick and less likely it is going to be to crack. Went ahead and scored all the way around. Now what I'm going to do is come in with my paintbrush and flood all of those cracks with water. So if those are canyons, I'm going to flood them all the way to the top. I want them filled with water, but I don't want to smooth everything out and get rid of my nice scoring. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the same for this side. I'm going to dampen a little bit, and I'm going to score this up really well. I now have both sides scored, so I can come in and flood all of the valleys on this side. And we're ready to join these guys together. All right, let's take our spout. We're going to push it in. All the way around. So we're just going to mash and give this thing a wiggle. And you see all of this slip, all of the soft clay that squeezes out? That's going to act kind of as our glue. So we're going to give this a wiggle. Look for that slip to mash out all the way around. And um, when that water squishes out, it also gives us a little bit of suction. So we get a, bit, a little bit of immediate attachment. So it's not going to fall off while we're working with it.
So we have our spout mashed on. I'll take a little bit of water, not a lot. I just want this to be damp. And I'll take my finger around. And I'm going to push this spout towards the pot. And since this spout is still soft, it's going to form it to the pot and really help that match up. I don't do much. I just move, move on. I don't want to dwell in one spot and overwork one spot. Um, I just smear, move on. I try not to worry too much about what it looks like. It'll get better and better as you go around. Um, if you sit and focus on one spot, more likely you're going to make more marks than you're going to take away. And just like that, our spout is attached. So I use one of these cheap brushes, almost like a magic eraser for clay. I'll come back in and brush using almost no water and that'll remove any of my finger marks and blend away any of my uh, leftover score marks. The next bit of work we need to do with the bench is poke a vent hole for our lid so that these pour well. We'll want to put this higher up on the lid so I'll just take a tool and drill a little hole. I don't want to make these ginormous but I don't want to make them so small that the glaze fills them in. One last thing before I let you go. I pulled us a long handle, long skinny handle and I'm going to show you guys how to make these lugs to hold your teapot handles onto your teapots. I cut away a section of that handle um, to make these lugs, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half. These are about three inches long, which is way too much. I'm going to lay them side by side and line them up so that they're the same length. And I'm going to cut them, oh, probably two and a half inches or so. I've brought you guys in a little closer so you can see how I go about shaping and attaching these. So I'm going to take these and give them a little bit of a pre-bend, something like this, a little bit of a hump in the middle, and kind of just get a feel for what they look like, and I think that is plenty fine. There is plenty of space to get underneath it. I do like to keep these fairly flat, so I'll push this up, trying to keep this top edge pretty um, flat with the top of it. It can be off a little bit, but the handles are easier to put on if you can keep those um, closer to um, flat and playing with this lid. Once I feel happy that everything is lined up and true, I'll come in and mark where I'm going to score and slip these lugs. I'll mark both sides. I will pull them off, score these areas really good. I will score my lugs. I'll wet the areas I scored. With everything scored and wet, I'll go ahead and attach my lugs. I'll attach those just by placing them in right on my score marks, give them a wiggle and a little bit of a mash down, doing a little bit of shaping, and they are ready to go. I do like to look one final time across the back of these to make sure everything is lined up and in good shape. Now that we've looked over our pot, we've got everything lined up and in shape, this is our finished teapot. I might add in this part at the end where I go back in and actually come in and fix all the things that I was ignoring the whole time. Mm -hmm.